Find who did this. Find every collaborator and kill them all. After wasting all of episode 3 on two inconsequential, irrelevant characters that play absolutely zero role in the overarching plot, <laughs> The Last of Us breaks away from Brokeback Mountain and refocuses on the main characters of the show. It picks up with Joel escorting Ellie to a Firefly outpost in Wyoming, with the hope that her immunity to the infection is the key to creating a vaccine. The story begins with the two of them on the road while Ellie stumbles upon Bill's adult magazines. Pictures. Oh, no, no, no. Put that back. That's not for kids. How Ellie? do you even walk around with that thing? Please get rid of it. And after two days of driving on the road together, the two of them run into a detour in Kansas City, forcing them off the highway into a residential area near downtown. And as they're driving through town, they notice that Fedra, or the military, is missing. The local QZ zone is unoccupied, there are no soldiers on guard, which is a major red flag. Then they are attacked by three militiamen, who set up a trap resulting in them crashing and totaling their truck. They then get into a shootout with the three men. Joel manages to kill two of them while Ellie saves him from the third. They then go into hiding, worried that the sound of the gunshots will attract others. Now, while they're in hiding, we're introduced to a new villain named Kathleen, played by Melanie Linsky. If she looks familiar, she should. She played Rose, Charlie's psychotic ex-girlfriend in the show Two and a Half Men. And in keeping with the tone of the show's feminist theme, she too is a ball-crushing feminist archetype. Here. Have I satisfied the necessary conditions for you to talk? She tries to play another gruff, tough woman in command. I say try because she's a horrible casting. Nothing about her persona says tough girl or alpha female. All episode long, she saunters around in her mom winter coat, giving orders to well-trained militiamen with guns because she's a girl boss. Understand? <laughs> in her adorable suburban mom voice. It's one of the most ridiculous things the show has ever tried to pull off. Watching her play that role was hilarious. But getting back to the show, Kathleen and her merry band of henchmen are after two characters named Henry and Sam, whom she was already chasing but believes are responsible for the deaths of the two men that Joel and Ellie killed. I'm sorry, three men that Joel and Ellie killed. The entire episode is a glorified game of cat and mouse, as we see Joel and Ellie sneaking around town trying to stay hidden, while Kathleen and her goons search for them, believing that they're Henry and Sam. Later in the episode, Kathleen and her top goon find a developing sinkhole, which looks to be a horde of infected digging their way into town. And while this is going on, Joel and Ellie sneak into a skyscraper where they plan to sleep and hide out for the night. But later they're awakened by the sound of two individuals creeping up at them and pointing guns in their face. And it's at that moment we're introduced to Henry and Sam, the two people that Kathleen and her goons are after. And they're two black kids. They look to be no older than 11 and 16 years old. And that's when the story ends. Now, this episode is relatively short in comparison to episodes one and three. Aside from the gunfighting, nothing really happens plot-wise. But what makes it so crucial is we learn that the most dangerous thing out there isn't the infected or the clickers. It's human beings. It's other people, which is a powerful lesson for Ellie to learn because she was born in the quarantine zone. She has no knowledge of the outside world. Not only that, but for the first time, we see Joel and Ellie begin to bond, but not only with each other, but with us as an audience. And that, to me, is the most important aspect of the show. And I say that because I'm a huge fan of Game of Thrones. Even with the disaster that was the final two seasons, it still ranks high amongst my all-time favorite shows. And what made that show so great, so special, is the fact that it draws you in emotionally. The characters were beautifully written, well cast and well acted, so much so that you couldn't help but genuinely care for them. You feel their hurts, their pains, their anguish, and you worry about their safety. And on top of that, the stakes on the show were high. 
no one is really saved at the last moment. It wasn't a show that shied away from killing off your favorite character. So it kept you in a constant state of worry with each episode. You were always asking yourself, even in pleasant moments, is this the time? Is this the moment my favorite character dies? Because it always catches you off guard. And when it happened, there was an explosion of emotions. And The Last of Us has yet to do that. For example, I didn't care when Tess died because I didn't know her. I wasn't emotionally attached or invested in her as a character. And of what little I did know of her as a character, I didn't like. In fact, my reaction was the complete opposite of what they were going for. <laughs> I was happy, excited, celebratory when she died. The same with episode three. I didn't care for Bill and Frank in their romance because it had nothing to do with the show. It was put there for a niche audience. It was put there to check a box. It was put there to appease fringe groups. It was completely unnecessary. But more importantly, it stole screen time from Joel and Ellie. Their father-daughter relationship, the crux of the show, was ignored, and we didn't see the writers attempt to do that until this episode, episode four. And speaking of the chemistry between characters, now I haven't played the game, but again, I have watched videos on YouTube. And I know a lot of people don't like Bella Ramsey as Ellie, but I don't mind her in that role. But it was in this episode, episode four, that she began to grow on me. I'm starting to like her as a character. But as for Pedro Pascal as Joel, uh, uh, it's not working for me. His Texas accent comes and goes whenever he feels like it, but for the most part, it's not there. Now, I loved him as Oberlin Martell in Game of Thrones, and I loved his work in The Mandalorian, but he kind of sucks in The Last of Us because he doesn't have a personality. The Joel that's in the game, from what I've seen, has more expression. The way he delivers his lines, it's, it's, it's robotic. It reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. He's too stoic. He doesn't have a personality. And that makes it difficult to invest in the character. But again, as for Ellie, I'm beginning to like her more. And that's it. That's all I have to say about this episode. One more announcement. At the end of the week, I'm going to start implementing live recap shows. It's going to take place on a Sunday. I'm pretty sure of that, but I haven't settled on the time. Could be Sunday morning, could be Sunday afternoon, could be Sunday evening. But the purpose is to have more interaction with you, the audience. We can come in and discuss some of the things that I've talked about throughout the week, or maybe even the previous week. So you can come on and voice your opinion and we can have a dialogue. But I do put in one rule. Respect is the order of the day. I would like for us to be nice to each other. I'm not the type of person that likes to have, get into an argument or have a back and forth, but I would like to hear your voice. So be on the lookout for those programming. Again, I don't know exactly when that will start. However, I will also be practicing throughout the week. You may even see me do live streams where I will label them as practice. And you're free to come by and listen in, maybe even offer some helpful suggestions from a technical perspective. Your participation will be much appreciated. Oh, and if you have any suggestions of any other forms of entertainment media I should view, whether it be a movie or a television show, let me know in the comments section. Especially if you feel as if that form of entertainment media that you're suggesting has a lasting cultural impact. That's the purpose of this channel. We discuss entertainment media in regards to this impact on the culture. Anyway, that clears up the announcements. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comments section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out.